My name is Vartai. Uh, this presentation about the last mile of monitoring. One of the open slides. What happens after you collect all the data, figure out what's going on? Detected an alert. How do you get that to to a user that is not necessarily looking at the, the screen of the monitoring tool that uh, you may be using, like you, they don't have a dashboard open, or even if they do have an open, obviously, if you have lots of uh, uh, large infrastructure, you can't see everything. So how do you get that to the to people that might be remote or not necessarily using the product? Uh, I've been working on this IT management stuff for the last uh, two decades in uh, various roles. I worked as an end user, a consumer of these uh, products uh, as in, in ops, uh, then worked for the vendors implementing them and as a systems engineer and a product manager, and also worked in the systems integration type, consulting type companies, uh, uh, working with various tools from different vendors as well. So what is a notification? Uh, it's basically any information that is sent to you by any system. Our life is full of notifications, both in offline world as well as online world. You know, notes from your doctors to, you know, so-and-so checked in somewhere in Fours, uh, Foursquare or Facebook, whatever that might be. In business context, uh, typically the notifications are part of business process. You have something that you have to approve, some action you have to take, uh, there's always some notification related to it. And in the context of IT operations, what we care about mostly, notifications are a crucial part of the, the IT management processes, you know, whether you deal with ITIL, etc. And the fault performance management processes use it heavily, obviously, to deal with the, the application or, I mean, the alerts that the system generate, but it's also used in change management as well as in service level agreements, uh, service level management stuff as well. Why last mile of uh, monitoring? Uh, as I said, I've been working on this uh, IT monitoring systems, implementing and operating them for, for a long time. Uh, but uh, in recent years, there has been a, sort of a new twist has been added in my life, uh, we, I started a company about seven years ago that implements uh, management tools, and we also started developing some open source tools called Rapid OSS to sort of integrate all these things and build unified web-based interfaces. But as part of that company, in the last couple of years, we also started supporting the systems uh, that we built. So after implementing something, if the customers are using uh, our tools as well as other monitoring tools like OpenNMS, we started supporting those tools on, on an ongoing basis. That required us to actually monitor their, our own systems and figure out when, what's going on. Uh, so we became sort of the part of their operations teams as a tier that uh, the monitoring applications, so to speak, became our responsibility. So I started getting alerts and, you know, all times of day. We also rolled out uh, a new sort of a service, uh, software as a service type thing that's running on the, cl uh, the cloud called OpsGenie.com, uh, which is an alert and notification uh, management as a service type of stuff. But uh, that's, uh, on the other hand, is a, uh, an application service that has to be running 24-7 with no downtime. So although I have I've been working mostly in very large service provider type environments in most of my career, you know, tens of thousands of devices, in some cases uh, hundreds. Uh, in the last couple of years, I've been also supporting this mission critical application that is in dozen servers, just uh, not that big, but has very high uh, availability requirements. And I started getting alerts from those systems uh, as well when there is something wrong or something may go wrong. And like everything else, when your perspective changes uh, and you see the world from a different uh, point of view, things change. You know, I, before that, for a long time, I've implemented systems that generated alerts, and I just sent it to other people. And the last couple of years, I started getting those uh, alerts myself, and I started getting really mad when I get the alerts uh, with, uh, that didn't provide me 
any information. Uh, like uh, some system that we started initially using was saying that you have an alert. I would get a text. And I'm like, great, what does that mean? What do I do with that information that you have to find a computer, etc.? So that started this kind of a transformation for me that I started looking more and more into what happens in this the last mile in, in the sense that I spent so much of my time before building these systems, but if you don't build this thing, the, the, the ex, uh, experience was what I considered similar to if you had a 1200 VPS modem with a text uh, terminal connect to the internet right now, you wouldn't care the, the you know the web is with all this like cool stuff with videos and you know all the stuff that you can do. All you can experience is the the crappy rate that you know the screen refreshing in your in your screen. And in some ways, I think we sort of uh, do a disservice to our ourselves by providing the interface to the, the consumers of the information that we create in a such a poor way. Uh, if you think about it, the notifications that we send are the interface. It's not just the UI that, you know, a lot of us in the past complain about the open NMS UI, uh, you know, that it's not great and all that kind of stuff. But compared to notifications, open NMS UI is great. The, you know, the notifications we send, there are a few hundred characters of text. And in many cases, the content of the text is not that great. You know, it doesn't say much about it. And many people experience the monitoring solution that we develop with that interface, not even not even the, the open NMS console. So they are like the people who use the 1200 BPS modem to connect to the internet right now. They don't think great of what we are doing, and there is a mismatch. So that's basically triggered this last mile of monitoring concept, that if we don't do during do better work at bringing the information to people with the notifications, their impression of our system, uh, end users' impression of our system is not that great. So that's what uh, I've been sort of working on. So how do we get notified? By far, you know, I looked at, uh, uh, asked around, do the surveys and etc. email is the most common notification system. Uh, followed by text, but the email is is the most, uh, by far the most common. And then some systems can do phone calls and send instant messages. Uh, I've seen people do even IRC type stuff that that's where they, their uh, people live. But email notifications don't do it for the type of thing that uh, we do. Uh, it's okay if you're sending an email notification that you have an invoice that you have to uh, approve within the next two days, you know, there is no time sensitivity. Or if it's not, if it's lost, you know, it's not a big loss for you. But the alert uh, depends, depends uh, on the amount. <laughs> true. And depends on who gets paid, right? Yeah. So, some way it might still make, make its way to your desk. But, you know, this stuff, like your application is down or the router goes down, there's some kind of problem. Typically, we deal with more time, time sensitive stuff. So, Email doesn't do it, and even if you send it to, you know, the emails, if you send to me an email, especially with the, the latest uh, kick trying to work with uninterrupted at least half an hour, I turn off stuff, you know, I, I don't want to look at inter, uh, Twitter or, or email or anything else when I'm working, you know, 30, 45 minutes block. So even if you sent it and they have a mobile, they're not going to see it in a timely manner, so you can't rely on that. So to solve that problem, obviously, uh, in the past, some of us have been carrying those you know, in our belts, and they would beep and buzz and all that kind of stuff. Uh, typically, IT guys, drug dealers, and doctors, pretty much the, the core users of these. Surprisingly, some people still do, hopefully. <laughs> not, not no one here, but uh, I do have no people who are still using pagers. They don't trust uh, the coverage area of their uh, phones. Some uh, uh, people that I work with in their data center, their phone doesn't work, so they have to carry something that you know, works there to get the, uh, the messages, etc. But they are trying to get rid of it. 
Most of us got rid of it because we got mobile phones, and the mobile phones have text messages, so we don't have to carry a separate device anymore. And you know, they work better than uh, these uh, pagers, uh, pagers and, and those devices. But they don't solve all the problems. Obviously, the SMS stands for short message service, I believe, and uh, they are short, you know, 160 characters or less, depending on your provider. They don't guarantee delivery. You know, we have been, since we are sending it ourselves and the customers can come back to us monitoring this, and it's not bad. In most cases, it works, but in some cases, depending on which country they are receiving, uh, you get half an hour to four hours delay sometimes. And if you're only relying on that inform that as a notification method, that can be a problem. And it's fire and forget. It's you don't know uh, whether the the alert recipient, the, the person that you send it to, received your information. So I say it's a little bit better than the carrier pigeons. You know, same amount of information you can send. It goes faster. But once you send it, you don't know whether they got it or someone shot the pigeon in the in the air uh, or, or whatever it might be. It's just the best effort delivery type stuff. And we have smartphones now. I mean, we don't have to live in a world of basically the, the text terminal uh, kind of stuff. We have our end units are not dumb terminals. They can handle more than 160 characters at a time. So we should be able to do better. We should be able to provide the alert recipient with information that they can use to do whatever they need to do. And with that thought, like uh, sort of uh, my last couple years have been building something and as well as like identifying what the system needs to do. So in the, the rest of the presentation, I mostly go different characteristics we find and how we can apply to, to different monitoring systems that uh, in use to, to make them better in this uh, notification stuff. So what should an effective notification system should do? The, one of the first things, in my opinion, is that it should give the users a single place, single system to manage all their notification stuff. Even in a small company like like us, you know, in the obscene service that we provide, you know, typical web-based service, we use six different tools to monitor the infrastructure to the, the applications. You know, we have one tool for the Java applications. We have something that monitors from outside, just like the users do through synthetic web calls. We have a, we have another tool uh, to systems monitoring that the uh, systems resources. We use another tool to do collect logs and the in the logs, there are exceptions, and based on those alerts, and we have some tools of our own, custom built things that check all different things uh, from uh, from the application, the application metrics, so to speak, and the business metrics. You know, how many users do we have? How many alerts, etc., and and can create alerts based on those. So even in our small environment, if we were to ask the the recipient of the alerts, you know, if they came and asked me that I have to go to all these different tools and create a profile and put my phone number and, you know, load whatever the application, uh, iPhone or Android application they might have, uh, you know, and if anything changes, manage that, it becomes cumbersome. And it's not just the contact details, but also notification preferences. Maybe I don't want to hear, get a notification text message all the time and etc. So... I really think it's critical to have some place that you unify all this stuff and they provide that to, to the customers, I mean, the users of the, of the alert notifications that you will send. And if you do that, you should also empower the users to maintain this information themselves. In one of the environments that we support, uh, there are over 300 users of alerts. If, you, if the admin is the only person who can do that, they do add, delete, change all day long. You know, someone's email address changes or the phone number changes and all that kind of stuff. Or they don't want to not get a notification this time of the day anymore and so, so and so will get it. If you do that, the administrator overhead becomes very large. Just doesn't make sense. Let them do manage their own preferences in some simple application that uh, you know may 
basically a web-based application that they can so that administrator doesn't have to deal with that stuff. They can do it. They can turn it off if they wanted to. They went to vacation, and they can turn it back on when they're back on, etc. And that way, it's, uh, it's a win-win for everybody. They feel their control over what's happening, and the admins don't have to deal with all that stuff. And to be able to do that, those two things that I mentioned, uh, first, consolidate them, and also let the users manage from one place, you need to be able to come up with a system that is easy to integrate with. If, uh, in our case, for example, the six tools, if it took you know, a week to integrate with each one, that becomes a, you know, not so much of a winning proposition to, be, to have a single system. So the notification system itself has to have an easy way to integrate that. And the way that we've seen is that, well, you have to have a web-based API so that anybody can really use it. Command line top tools are very important, so some people just write scripts just like we do, and the from scripts they can generate the alerts, you know, send it to the notification system and tell who to notify, etc. And we also found out that the email integration is the key. Almost every single monitoring system out there can send email alerts. So it's the lowest common denominator. For, for everything. And it's also easiest to configure. So you basically say, send these, send this address to alert. If you can receive those emails, then you can do all your manipulation, etc. who to send it to in, in one system. Without that, it becomes quite uh, difficult to, it, it becomes more time consuming. It has some deficiencies like the emails. Also, you don't know whether you're receiving it or not. Except, you know, it's not connection based, uh, harder to trace, but uh, it's the, the first thing, you know, that way you can integrate first and then offer them, push them towards more uh, higher quality integration methods like the, the command line tools, programming libraries for Perl and Java or uh, Ruby or Python, whatever it might be, or the web API directly. And obviously you can use the mechanisms like TCP sockets. It's very easy to use. So if they can do scripts, they, can, they might prefer doing that as well. It's... Uh, Good to have multiple methods to, so that people can use whatever method they're comfortable to integrate with the, with the system. And the next thing is that uh, you have to come up with a reliable system. We had a lot of uh, problems in the environments where there was a lot of finger pointing. I didn't receive that notification. In some cases, the alert systems didn't send the alerts. In some cases, it was sent got stuck somewhere, it was late, I didn't get it on time. So there's a lot of uh, friction between the monitoring systems, monitoring tools guys, and the consumers of that information. And every time there is a failure or something that didn't work right, it's you know your fault and that's fault, etc. comes up. To, to prevent that kind of stuff, a couple of things need to happen. First, you have to do whatever you can to make the notification system reliable. And that requires... Uh, in our experience, using multiple notification methods. So you can't rely on just text or email or uh, you know, the mobile push stuff that the, the Google and Apple have for their phones that you, know, you can send it to apps and on those boxes, uh, mobile devices. So, but although none of them are guaranteed delivery notification methods, if you use them in a combined way, they do provide very reliable system. Uh, typically, in our case, we use it so, so that we can tier it. You know, send me an email first. If I don't see it, send me a text message or a push. And then if I still don't respond, five, in five minutes later, call me so that I know something is going on. So we kind of use them in combination so that one way or another, uh, you, you get the alert. And obviously, if you do everything and then your notification system is not working, uh, you know, you're not going to get alerts. So if you're not getting any alerts, is life all good? Well, it depends. If the, the reason that you're not getting alerts is that your notification system is down and it's not sending alerts, which happened to us, you know, everybody was happy, happy about it, then it's, it's not good, obviously. So that... Uh, it lasts till there is a failure and someone says, hey, I didn't get a notification and, uh, you know, big headache and uh, stress for the, the monitoring folks. So you need to do a couple of things, like obviously it needs to have high availability as much as possible. But we also found that this end-to-end -end monitoring is a 
is key. So typically we set up something that does generate an alert and expect the notification back to kind of uh, uh, test the system full circle. So it's not enough that, you know, the server is running, etc. Like there is something in the network connectivity from the, uh, the monitoring system to the internet or, or somewhere, unless you test the full circle, uh, it's very hard to find those. We also implemented heartbeats for the, the systems that we integrated. So like they send us something every couple of minutes. And if you don't receive that, we said that we haven't heard from you. And then uh, we notify the owner of that system to say that you know, your, your, your integration to us is not working. So that's uh, uh, all kinds of, some of the examples of the kind of things to come up with a reliable system. And the last one, obviously, doesn't make it necessarily more reliable, but it really helps when something does go wrong. First of all, it helps you to figure out what went wrong if you have tracking for everything. But also, it helps the monitoring guys to prove that what they did and where it failed so that the finger painting pointing becomes much less if you can say at 1048 I send the alert and 1050 you've seen the alert. So you can track when the alerts were sent, when they were received, you know, how they saw it, etc. So there, there are ways to do that with different notification uh, methods and it should be used as much as possible. And this is probably my biggest I don't know, pet feel or the driver that the, the alerts have to contain content, all the relevant con content with the alert. If you, if you don't do that, then you basically well, every time you send an alert, you're asking the person to make a judgment call. Uh, if you're walking on the shopping mall with you know, three kids and you receive an alert that says something not meaningful, what do you do? You, know, you drive back to to home just to look at what the alert is. Typically, you know, if you were receiving alerts once uh, every two weeks, that might not be an issue. But in my experience, in most cases, if you're on call, you receive alerts rather frequently. And if you if you can't assess what, what's happening with the alert quickly and decide what how critical it is, it's a problem. There are a lot of things you can do, like even in, you know in OpenMS context. Don't send the threshold exceed that alert, but send the, you know, the, you're collecting data, right? So send the trend charts for the, for, uh, for, for the, the whatever the device or the, the entity is. Send the, the, the details of the uh, entity, what, what this device is. Any change history that you can get from whatever system, the, the recent logs, if it's an application, etc. All, all that will help the person that's receiving the alert recipient to make uh, good decisions. When we first uh, were looking into this, I, you know, the, I used the, the age-old thing. If I get an alert, every time you send an alert that says the CPU utilization is over the set threshold, a kitten dies somewhere. I don't want to see an alert like this. It basically... I use expletives when you know when I'm when I'm on call and I get an alert like that. That doesn't mean anything. Is that bad? What am I supposed to do with this? The CPU utilization is high. It's good, great. The machine is working, you know, extra. That's what you paid it for. Maybe it's a good thing. I can't decide anything based on that information. I will want to see how the CPU utilization or the interface utilization, whatever that might be, was for the last hour. Did it change? You know, is there a spike? Uh, is it a temporary spike, or is it just a, a continuous improvement? Was it like that yesterday? How about the same time last week? You know, a couple of trend graphs would tell me a lot about what what that is. What is this server used for? Is it a database server, or is it a DNS server? You know, everything will go down if you can't process things anymore. You know, it's it's very the context is very important. I want to know what the server is. And I want to know what's, what's happened in the past, in the last 24 years. Someone pushed a change that broke something. If I knew, know that, it will be very easy to correlate that to what needs to happen next. And I need, you know, if I can see all this when the, I get the alert, then I can make a judgment call. This is a critical problem. It's urgent. I need to go and fix it right now. Or 
it can wait till tomorrow morning. You know, I don't have to wake somebody else at 2 a.m. as well. You know, I can assess this and say, I, I got it, and then move on. I also want to see, for example, in this case, what are the running processes on that? And which of those processes is using all the CPU? If you, you know, it's easy to get from the box, you know, run a top, get the, the process, utilization, whatever, and assign it to the alert. And even not so technical information like, okay, the CPU utilization is high and it does seem to have a problem. I need to restart this machine. Can I decide that? Probably can't. Who am I supposed to ask? If you don't know those people, do you really want me to restart your box because the CPU utilization is high? It doesn't make sense. And this is by, by no means an odd example. I see these alerts all the time. In most places that I work, you know, it's, it's a, you know, interface utilization high and that kind of stuff because you have static thresholds and it fits for one machine. It doesn't fit the other one. There are a lot of things that happen that way. Ideally, I would want a run book, and I, want, I would want an explanation of what am I supposed to do, do with this alert for every type of alert. We started doing this in, uh, in, in my company that when, for, for Ops Genie, when we get an alert, every alert is now coded. Not every alert has an explanation, but at least I can look for that alert in the past when the same code had happened and the, see what people said about it at least get that, and we're trying to build, starting from the most common ones, uh, these runbook stuff. And it's, you know, just like everybody else, we procrastinate or there are other things that we have to fight and it uh, doesn't get done. But every time there's an alert uh, in the middle of the night that I can't figure out what to do, and then I have to wake somebody else up, uh, you know, I swear myself, promise myself that I'm going to do that. And after you send them the alert, you know, if presumably provided them a lot of information or not, you have to enable them to respond to the alert. The, the alerting, the notifications shouldn't be a one-way street. If you just send stuff and there is no way for the alert recipient to react to it, then it's a very inefficient process. You have, that means the back-channel ways of... Uh, communicating back. They have to call somebody in the operating system to find someone, or they have to find the computer and, and do that. By the way, just to, some of this information, if not all of it, might be available in monitoring systems. That doesn't mean it's available to the alert recipient. When I receive this alert, when I'm outside, my systems are behind the firewall. I can't get to it from my mobile phone. And even if I could, they probably the, the interface wouldn't work in my mobile phone. So if, if the scenario is that you'll get an alert and then you'll hunt down all this information, various monitoring management systems, you know, the ticketing system, inventory, monitoring, and, you know, wiki page, whatever that's set up, I don't know which one is where, you have a very long cycle till I figure out uh, what information I can get from where. That's why all this stuff needs to be set up and sent to the user so they can have access to it wherever they are. I mean, if you're assuming that they're going to VPN from their mobile, it's just not realistic. So then they need to be able to respond to it. At minimum, you need to let them communicate. So acknowledge the alert, you know, maybe add a note to it, I'm going to take care of this tomorrow morning, no problem, or help, I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm... Uh, struggling, whatever that might be, there needs to be some way to communicate. And better yet, they should be able to do some of the investigative actions themselves. Uh, you probably guys all do some standard troubleshooting stuff or network stuff. You, know, you ping the device, you trace route to it, you see whether DNS resolution works. Why not let them do those things from their mobile devices, wherever they're receiving, without having to, again, you know, connect to the network, find the PC, VPN to your network, etc. We do this, basically. We have actions called, you know, internally that custom actions you can add that I do a ping and you know, it does those things and attach to alert so I can see whether they work or not.
So there, you know, if you can do that with the system, it's very helpful. And ideally, you might want to run, let them run corrective actions, but I think that's kind of a pipe dream in most key places that uh, the security risk involved, it just doesn't seem to be a viable option. So I mostly stick with the first two. But some people seem to be more interested in doing those as well, at least as a target going towards. So the facilitating the collaboration, obviously, is, a, is important as well. You should be able to notify an individual user or a team of users, and they, maybe they manage the who the team, who gets notified themselves within that team. Uh, maybe escalate alerts till someone acknowledges the alert. We use that ourselves uh, quite often. You know, one user gets notified, and they have a certain amount of time, like five, ten minutes, to acknowledge the alert that they basically say, I got this. If not, the next person in the, in the list gets, gets uh, notified, and it you know, goes to three people. Almost in every alert, I'm, I am the last person. So if they don't, Within, let's say, 15 minutes, someone doesn't acknowledge, I get paged all the time. So, you know, that basically that means that they slacked off. At least two people didn't do what they're supposed to do, and they're, you know, either sleeping it off or whatever. And, uh, you know, sh they shouldn't happen, basically. And uh, the notification systems need to have some scheduling capabilities to manage the, uh, the on-call schedules as rotations, et cetera, as well as the escalations. So even in our small team, our team is spread around, uh, you know, across the Atlantic. So we have uh, seven hours difference uh, between us. So we try to optimize the daytime for both sides to, to be able to have 24-hour coverage so that, you know, we have as little time as possible off hours to that someone has to uh, – respond to alerts and, you know, hopefully very few hours that no one is awake. So in most cases, you need to, even if it's just in, in, you know, one country, in different times of the day, the alert needs to go to different different person. So, you know, some kind of rotation of being able to manage that schedule and sending to uh, different people becomes important. Like we have something... Uh, to, to be able to create those and manage that. So that's basically what I... Uh, any questions so far? Nope, all right. Uh, just, uh, you know, last five minutes or so we have, uh, if there is any questions or thoughts about the, the open, open NMS part of this notification stuff, uh, I wanted to talk about that. When I look at open NMS and the how we can use it, uh, you know, we've integrated with open NMS to be able to get the alerts, et cetera, but there are, you know, a lot of things that we can do better. Uh, <clears throat> for example, uh, one thing is that uh, you want to work with alarms when you're sending notifications at the very least and not with events. It creates too much noise. Uh, you want to be able to create alerts based on aggregate data, not just like individual interfaces, but if something is happening, that needs to be correlated somehow. Uh, and even OpenNMS is a, like a framework. In most places, it's not the only monitoring tool for various reasons. There's some application thing, whatever it is. So you still need something to consolidate stuff and maybe correlate that the, all that's coming like uh, Marcus was talking about. So some need of a correlation of th those things. Uh, you want to be able to send as few alerts as possible for the same problem. So if you want to send 10 different notifications for the same alert, if you not want but uh, end up sending that, that's not ideal. So those things basically leads me to believe that there needs to be some external process, OpenNMS notification engine, so to speak, that works with OpenNMS data, but needs to sort of uh, sit as a standalone process to get events and alarms, do some processing, allow you to add some logic to it, and after that, send, send the notification through whatever means that you want. You know, there are external 
services to send uh, text messages. The, the Opsini I, I mentioned, you know, it also does it, uh, those things. But no matter what you use, you can use it from there. But building that capability to inside OpenMS, to me, does not work well. It needs to be a separate process that uh, may need to sit on a different box, uh, depending on uh, the network uh, security parameters. And uh, needs to be able to get stuff from other places as well as uh, OpenMS and maybe dynamically add logic to it. Like the, in, in few places in OpenMS, the Groovy is being used. That's uh, sort of language that I'm more comfortable with, but, uh, but uh, it doesn't have to be, but it's a, it's a good candidate for it. So for this uh, purpose, I sort of a uh, couple of months ago uh, sent an email to the list to see whether there is a, uh interest. If there is, you know, we can sort of design and, and build to it. Then if there is a, you know, the sufficient interest from the, the OpenNMS open NMS community to do that, uh, to be able to basically converge towards the notification system that I, I've been talking about for the, in, in this presentation that can send rich notifications to uh, f use multiple ways and uh, correlate them and not send multiple alerts, etc. All, all those things that we talked about uh, would be possible for something that would work with OpenNMS as like an OpenNMS notifier or something like that that uh, can be integrated. So if uh, this sounds like something that, you know, worth it, then uh, just let me know and uh, over the list, et cetera, and we can start, you know, jotting it down. And we have some code but that we use, but it's not obviously a... Uh, meant to be a generic product that can be used for a lot of people, so it requires a, a better design and uh, and to be to be able to use. So that's pretty much it. Uh, any questions other than? I have a question. Did, uh, did your customer ever integrate this notification system into OpenMS to get a work with OpenMS? Did my customer yeah. ever integrate it? With OpenNMS? Yeah. I mean, we've integrated with OpenNMS in, in one customer that's using that and wanted to send the, the alerts through that. So they had, but they had, they implemented the sort of like that external stuff on their own, that, like uh, get the alerts, do some stuff, and then send the alerts out. So we didn't have to do that for them. In, in that case, that customer has more... Uh, development skills in-house, and they were able to do that. And, and they are actually doing things like uh, after they get an alert, they go to the inventory system and do some checks, and they do a trace route. All that they attach to it. The, the, when you create an alert in Opsini on, on our servers, you can attach files to it. So that's what they are doing basically in the middle. They get the alert from OpenNMS, and then they do some facts gathering, whatever it is, and decide whether there should be an alert to go out. And if it is, they create the alert with us, and they attach those uh, files to the alert, and then we basically push it out to whoever they want the alert, the notifications to go to so that they can see that. But we didn't have to do that. Based on what they did, we sort of uh, uh, documented the, you know, sort of how the integration can work. Uh, obviously, the easiest way is, that, like I said, is the email integration, right? You can have OpenNMS send an email, and that you know we consume the email and notify whoever you want. On, on our system, you can create rules like for this type of uh, alerts, notify this person, and use schedules, all that kind of stuff on our end. But uh, you know, if you want additional processing, that you need that external thing to work in the middle. Without that, it's very uh, difficult to be able to do that. So we, we've also shown sort of a proof of concept to them how you can execute actions from uh, a mobile device that, for example, uh, grab the logs like we do. Like when we get an alert, uh, what we want is basically the last 500 lines in the log file for that application component. So you can, from the mobile device, you say grab the logs, and that would trigger a process that you know, gets the last 500 
uh, lines put into a text file and attached to the alert so I can see uh, from my mobile phone what the log says, not just the, the exception message that whatever the line was, but the, the context behind it, you know, what happened before, etc. And they, uh, they are looking into implementing that, but they didn't do that yet. So they're mostly doing stuff that holding the alert alarms and doing some processing with the inventory system. And they have some run books that they go save the HTML page and attach to it as well before they send the alert out. That kind of thing, the integration they do. Yeah. Yeah, in, in our case, the, the way it works is like that. When you, if you're creating alert through Opsgenie, you basically send the alert to us. As you're sending, you, you specify either as part of the alert or in our systems who should be notified. And we have apps for you know, iPhone and Android uh, phones. And if you don't, you can use the text message to, to you know, SMS as well. And SMS has a link that opens up a mobile uh, HTML5 type mobile app. So the, the app has all the data for the alert, you know, all the attached files, all the fields coming through charts, et cetera. That way, basically, they can see. And we store those things on the web somewhere, so it's accessible from everywhere. So even if your monitoring systems are behind firewalls, you can make this stuff around the alert accessible to, to people outside, you know, on the web. So that the, was the kind of a, how we started as well, that, you know, the getting around this uh, security limitations of you don't want people to access from the web internally to monitoring system. You know, DMZs and opening up firewalls, that's just too much uh, friction to be able to do. So this way you don't have to do that. You send just as much, as much information as necessary as part of the alert to the person, and they can, they can view from the, the apps. That's the, that's the model. Sure. All right. Thanks, everyone. I think I'm just on time. Thanks.